7.30 a.m. and Joburg is in the grip of a cold front. A howling blast whips around the buildings, competing with a cacophony of cars and buses and trucks. And there I'm breathing in all these fumes as I weave across between the other pedestrians rushing towards my meeting and my phone rings. Sorry, who? Sorry, you're breaking? Doctor? Oh, hello, doctor. What? Cancer. Cancer of the esophagus. Hello? You've got to love MTN. That phone call was the start of a journey for me, a journey of discovery. And what I learned changed my life. And it is my privilege and pleasure to be able to share that, what I, what I learned with you. You see, it's not the problem, that's, the problem that I have is not unique. You've had cancer touch your life, or heart failure, or strokes, or addictions. And, and if it's not health issues, you've just lost your job, and your marriage is on the rocks, and that Cynthia you've been watching on, on MasterChef has just been kicked off. We've all got problems. There is nobody that doesn't. But it's not the problems that cause us distress. It's how we deal with them. So if I can explain to you, if, um, let, let's do it this way. Imagine, if you will, that this chair represents my biggest problem. And it's your fault that I'm un unhappy and unsuccessful and unfulfilled. You are stopping me from getting what I want. And I avoid you because you make me uncomfortable. As if my comfort has got something to do with my happiness, my success, my fulfillment. We're also quite good at hiding them, pretending they're not there, and putting on a brave face. Problem? What problem? What's really cool is we even hide them from ourselves. Problem? I can't see a problem. What problem? Or we carry them on our shoulders, saying, look at this burden I have to carry and it's not fair. And if you're unlucky, I might even try and share it with you. Don't you want it? Well then, I'll make you feel guilty and say, if you're not going to share it with me, you're not my friend. Or we might even try and get comfortable with them. Hmm. It's my loss in life. Or even philosophical. It is what it is. I'm good at this. I do these things really well, don't I? But they're not useful. And you would have seen that so clearly if you'd been with me a few days after that phone call, sitting at home with my problem. And I'm saying, why? Why me? And Megan, my 17-year-old sassy daughter, walks in and she says, to make you stop. Stop. What does that mean? And look. But I'm looking, Megan, I'm looking. What do you think? She says, you're looking at yourself. Megan, I've got the most virulent form of cancer there is. What do you want me to look at? She says, look at the problem. Look differently. Guess what? She was right. Of course I should have known. You would have known if you had a 17-year-old daughter. She was absolutely right. It was time for a chat. Cancer, I said. Uh -huh. That's all you ever get from cancer. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming to me. What if? What if you were my greatest blessing and not my biggest curse? And in that moment, it dawned on me 
that phone call was a kick in the pants I needed to stop chasing my tail and to do something meaningful with my life. What is the biggest problem you are facing right now? And how are you addressing it? Are you avoiding it? Hiding it? Carrying it? Justifying it? Philosophizing about it, like I did? If so, you might want to remember what my daughter Megan said. Stop. Stop doing all those things. Stop doing what you've already been doing because it's not working. That's step one. Just stop. And the second is to look. Do you remember what Megan said? She said, look differently. Look for the positive intention, the blessing, the message for others, the dance partner. That's number two. And as you do number two, engage with the game. As you're looking at things differently, bring your friends into this and your colleagues and say, how can we generate more options to look at this problem? Because options is what you need as we move forward. You see, the more you avoid, hide, fall victim to, justify and philosophize about your problems, the more you deny your very humanity. You see, when we're born, we know nothing. Humans do not have animal instinct. We have to learn everything. And we do that by facing and solving problems. It's like the most, it is the essence, it is the quintessential aspect of being human is facing up to and solving problems. We are problem-solving beings. Have you ever watched a movie and enjoyed it when there wasn't a problem that the hero or heroine had to solve? Bet you can't remember one because you it would have been too boring to remember. That is what we do as humans, is we face up to and solve problems. And they don't go away. It's a bit like at school. The more we learn, the harder the lessons get and the more searching the exams. Which raises a question. As we're going through this journey of, of, of life, the school of life, what determines how we do? Whether we find success, happiness and fulfillment? The answer is as powerful as it is simple. It is the choices we make. And so that brings us to step three. Choose. Know that with the options that you generate in step two, you have the ability to choose a positive reaction to any problem. With stop, look, and choose, I was able to let go of a corporate toxic stress that caused my illness and take my life into a new direction of new insights, new understandings, new learnings and new opportunities to make a difference in the world. My biggest problem became my biggest blessing. Look again at yours. Your next breakthrough in your journey of life will come from your current blessing, your current problem, provided you also stop, look, and choose. And so as you look at this problem, what do you see? Do you see an opportunity for growth or a threat to your well-being? Opportunity or threat? You choose. Do you embrace what happens to you or fall victim to it? You choose. 
Do we live in a friendly world or a hostile one? You choose. Are you ready to take the next step in your life's purpose? Yes or no? You choose. Is this problem going to hold you back or help you up? Hold you back or help you up? You choose. Thank you. Thank you.